A DIY project is just a problem to a solution, and mine is pretty straightforward. To keep this home theater PC cool inside of my media cabinet. The build has a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and an RTX 5080 FE, so it gets toasty when gaming at 4K on my TV, and big surprise, in a small enclosed cabinet space, the thermal throttling is palpable. Despite removing the side panels and being cooled by a 240mm AIO with T30 fans from Fantex, the CPU reaches 97 degrees Celsius in Cyberpunk after 10 minutes, while the GPU hits its temp limit of 88C and runs over 220 megahertz slower compared to when running on my desk. I clocked the temperature in the cabinet at 46C or 114 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a heat I've only experienced when letting one rip under the covers. Opening the cabinet door helps a bit, but isn't enough to handle the pocket of heat and ultimately leaves me with hampered performance and a hot noisy mess. Fortunately, I found a solution, but if you only care about the before and after results, we're talking about a 30 degree drop in the cabinet temp with the door still closed. The CPU is running 31 degrees cooler while the GPU is shaved off 15 degrees, which would have been even more if it weren't for the 5080's temp limit. In Cyberpunk at 4K, we're now getting average frame rates that are 10% higher and 1% lows 22% higher than before. If you want to know before what exactly, there's a lot to discuss. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by Rocket Money. Last year, I was looking through my bank statements when I spotted a bunch of older subscriptions that I wasn't even using. Over $200 had been slipping through my wallet every single month, and that's when I knew it was time to hop onto Rocket Money. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money so you can pocket the savings. I've been using Rocket Money to easily cancel unwanted subscriptions. It securely identifies recurring charges and takes care of the cancellations for you, making customer service calls ancient history. You can even cancel from within the app with just a few taps. Simply upload a photo of your bill, and a few taps later, Rocket Money will automatically negotiate your bills, from internet services to cable and phone bills. Members who use all of Rocket Money's features save up to 740 bucks a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Don't let unwanted spending get in the way of saving for the things in life you actually want. Go to rocketmoney.com bitwit or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com bitwit to get started for free. To build a cooling system for the PC that allows me to game at full speed and limit my house fires to just one a year, I picked up three of these Airplate S7 fan assemblies, which are designed for cooling AV and home theater cabinets. Each one includes a brushed aluminum plate with an internal housing, fan grills, and what are essentially a pair of 120 millimeter PC fans. But instead of standard three or four pin connectors, they're permanently wired to a USB cable with an adjustable speed controller. That said, we won't get to see them in action since I swapped in my own fans and set them up to turn on with the PC using my voice, but more on all that later. The plan was to install one of the fan systems at the top of the media cabinet as an exhaust, and the other two as intakes based on the PC's orientation and where it required the most cooling, which actually took me a while to figure out. The build uses the A4 H2O from Lian Li, and although the case is just 11 liters in volume, it doesn't fit the cabinet comfortably on its feet, leaving zero room for cables at the back and barely clearing the door. Turning the case upright with its front facing down, however, gives enough clearance for cables and airflow on all sides, and actually improves accessibility of the side I.O., which is now at the front. This also keeps the highest point of the AIO radiator above the pump, with the tubes at the bottom to keep air bubbles where they can most effectively support performance and longevity. In this orientation, the radiator faces the right side of the cabinet with the RTX 5080 at the back, so to optimize CPU and GPU temps, that's where I'll be installing our two intake units. In my opinion, the only downsides to having the PC upright are cosmetic. The rear I.O. ends up at the top, and the front panel sits directly on the cabinet floor. To help remedy this, I picked up some right angle cables for a cleaner look, and swapped the case feet with rubber pads on the front panel, which is now the bottom panel. As for the exhaust, it just needs to mount directly above the PC to the top of the cabinet, which fortunately doesn't interfere with my TV or soundbar. Prepping for installation, I disassembled all three of the Airplate S7 units and swapped the stock fans for Arctic P12s. These are phenomenal performers for the price and stay super quiet, which is especially important for a home theater environment where I'm not using headphones most of the time. I also removed the included fan grills in place of these Silverstone dust filters for two reasons. One and two. 
After reassembling the fan units, I put masking tape on the cutout areas of the cabinet and used a pen to trace around the fan brackets. Then I drilled entry holes for the jigsaw blade and cut along the trace lines to complete the cutouts. While I had the drill out, I also used a one and a quarter inch spade bit to make a hole at the back for routing the PC and fan cables. Once the fan units were fit into place, I drilled pilot holes in the corners, then fastened them to the cabinet. I really wasn't sure what to expect, but this ended up looking really, really good, which is a huge relief. After seeing my home DIY projects, people often ask if I filed a police report. Now at the start of this project, I spent a lot of time debating the best way to power the fans. Connecting them to the motherboard would make them spin up automatically on boot and enable custom fan curves, but having a mess of cables hanging out of the PC and tethered to the cabinet would be a royal pain. On the other hand, powering the fans with USB controllers helps tidy things up significantly, but having to manually turn them on and off independent of the PC would get old pretty fast. The solution I finally settled on was to use a combination of USB fan controllers and smart plugs. The controllers are the same ones I used for the cooling system in my closet setup video, and they work like a charm. They have an on-off switch, an adjustable speed dial, and a two-way splitter. The Arctic P12 fans are daisy chainable and the four intakes are close enough to go on one controller, so I just need one more for the exhaust. The controllers then plug into a USB adapter, which then connects to an app-enabled smart plug. This one's from Casa, a TP-Link brand, and it works with Alexa and Google Home. By giving the PC its own smart plug as well, I connected both plugs to Google Home, then added them to a custom group. So whenever I give a voice command to Google, power to the smart plugs is toggled on, forcing the PC and the entire cooling system to start up together every time. Since the fan controller's power switch can stay in the on position, the fans fire up as soon as Google restores power to the smart plug. Getting the PC to cooperate, however, requires an extra step. I had to enter the BIOS, locate a setting called AC back, sometimes it's listed as restore AC power loss or similar, and change it from off to on. This instructs the PC to automatically boot when AC power is reconnected after a power outage or interruption, which in this case is simulated by the smart plug. My LG TV is already compatible with Google Home, so I added that to the group as well. This setup works flawlessly, and it reminded me how much fun home automation can be. Okay, turn everything on if you think Lyle's hot. Mama wants Lyle's hot and sour soup, baby. Give me that three inch egg roll, my spicy rice lord. Shutting down the PC is a different story, since abruptly cutting power risks corrupted system files if important background tasks happen to be running at the same time. I'll just shut down the old fashioned way in the OS, then once the system's off, use voice assistant to cut power to the smart plugs and TV so everything's ready to fire up again for my next couch encounter. To optimize cooling, I've left the side panels off for both the radiator and GPU. It works well since neither side is visible and the PC is enclosed in the cabinet anyway. Cable management was just a matter of tidying up all the wires in and behind the cabinet, and it's probably a little extra, but I also added clips on the backside of the PC to cleanly route the power and HDMI cables. As for the fans, I can always use the controller dials to adjust speed if I need to, but for convenience sake, I'm just running at a fixed RPM that balances performance and noise. When gaming, the whole setup is barely audible. The GPU fans went from 100% load before, now down to just 43%. Before we continue, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Pulseway. Pulseway is an intuitive platform that lets you conveniently manage all areas of your IT business. Monitor your entire IT setup in real time from anywhere on your desktop, phone, or tablet. From systems and devices to routers and switches, if it has an IP address, you can manage it with Pulseway. Receive instant alerts, fix issues remotely, and optimize your workflow by automating routine tasks. Whether you're a big or small company, it's super easy to set up and scale as your business or user base grows. If you're running an IT business or managing a team, Pulseway puts you in control so you can achieve great results. Right now, viewers get 30% off all pricing plans. So if you're ready for a better way to manage, try Pulseway for free with the link in the description. At first, I wasn't sure if the juice would be worth the squeeze, but I don't know how this mod could have gone any better. As mentioned at the start of the video, it dropped the internal cabinet temp by 30 degrees and eliminated all thermal throttling, boosting average FPS by 10% and 1% lows by 22%, which is just insane. The power automation is the cherry on top, that makes this whole project totally worth it. If you're looking to do something similar for your own living room or setup, I'll put links to everything I used in the description. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.
Thank you to all of the new and rejoining members. Thank you very much. The girl shows her appreciation by rubbing her face on a chair. And the boy doesn't know what's going on. He's just happy to be here. Good boy. It's a pretty solid loaf from the girl, but you gotta tuck those paws, girl. We gotta work on her tucking. <laughs>